All right, please go ahead and write down in your math notebook, your math goal, divide a whole number by a unit fraction. So write down what you know about dividing fractions. Okay, see, maybe nothing, but maybe you do. So write it down. Okay, so one way to think about it is thinking about how many one-eighths are there in one whole, right? Kind of like what we did yesterday. So how many eighths are in one whole? How many eighths do I need to make a whole? And we're going to write a division equation to show this. And how many one-eighths are there in three? And we're going to write a division equation to show this. So let me show you how what we have. So if you think about some, you have one whole. This is my one whole. Think of it as a piece of candy or something. And I'm going to divide it up into eight equal pieces, right? So how many do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It takes eight one-eighths to give me one whole. So my division equation is one divided by one eighth is going to give me eight pieces, right? Notice my number is getting bigger because I'm dividing it up. I'm splitting it up. I'm cutting it up. So how many one eighths are there in three? So if there's eight in one, right? So in three, there's got to be eight plus eight plus eight or eight times three, which is 24. So there are 24 1 8 in three holes. My equation would be three divided by 1 8 is equal to 24. Okay, that's what my division equation looks like. Three divided by 1 8 is 24. All right. Okay, I'm just gonna show you this one really quick. Remember this one's the one we did yesterday, having the six yards of ribbon, and you wanna make ornaments, two yards each. What did we do, right? We split them up into groups of two because I'm saying how many twos are there in six and I got three groups or three ornaments. Now I'm gonna look at the exact same problem, but now I'm gonna use um, unit fractions. So I still have my six yards, one, two, three, four, five, six. But now I wanna make ornaments that use a half a yard each. How many ornaments can I make? So each one of the yards, I'm breaking it up into a half. So I half tells me that I have a total amount. So that means division, okay? When you have a total amount, it means division. And this is gonna be helpful in a few lessons. So one way to think about it is how many one halves are in six? So I have six, but I'm dividing each one of the, each one of the six, each one of the things to give me my six, dividing each one into a half. So it's not six divided in half, it's the each one of the things that makes up the six divided in half, which looks like this. I'm gonna divide each one of my ones that I have in half, and I'm gonna get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. I get 12. Now I can make 12 ornaments. Why can I make more? because I'm splitting each one in half, right? Each one of the ones is being split in half so I can make more. They take up less yards than when they use two yards each, okay? So why is our quotient so big? It's because we're dividing six by a number less than one. So there'll be more than six of the pieces. I'm dividing it up, splitting it up so there's going to be more. This is very, very important. So when you have a whole number, you divide it by a fraction, right? Because you're cutting up the, you're cutting up more pieces. You're going to get more of them. You're going to get more smaller pieces. You're not getting a more amount. You're, it's still the same, but it's just smaller pieces, more smaller pieces. Okay. So one way to look at this 12 times one half is six. So the first equation tells us that we are combining 12 groups of one half, so we get six. The second equation, six divided by one half, is telling me that we have six and we divide it into groups of half. We divide it into groups that are half, 
so we get 12, so we get more. Okay, so one way to look at this, we saw it with pictures, now I'm gonna show you the math part of it. So we can find a common denominator. Remember how we found a common denominator for addition and subtraction of fractions? Okay, that's gonna help us. And remember how when we multiplied fractions at the very beginning, I told you we could draw a fraction bar, just a big fraction bar? That's in essence what I did, okay? So I'm gonna take my six divided by one half, my original, and I know that I have to put a one underneath, right? So it's right here, six over one is the same thing as six divided by one. Divided by one half, so I'm gonna divide by one half. So remember how we did the multiplication? Same way. Now to find a common denominator, I'm getting my two, so I know this has to turn to a two. How do I turn that into a two? Well, I multiply it by two, so one times two is two. If I multiply the bottom by two, what do I gotta do to the top? Multiply it by two. Six times two is 12. That gives me 12 over two. 12 divided by two, is that still six? Yeah, still the same thing, right? So now I can simply divide. 12 divided by one is 12. Two divided by two is one. So 12 divided by one is 12. That's the logic, that's the math behind it. Okay, let's look at another one. Write this one down. So write down two divided by one fourth is equal to eight, and let's see why. Then uh, make two squares, divide them into fourths, right? Because I have two things, two squares, two candy bars, two whatever, two pizzas, whatever you like. You have two things and you're dividing them into fourths. So that one's in fourths, that one's in fourths. How many fourths am I gonna have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Gives me eight. Here's the math behind it. So write this down. So I'm simply gonna do, do on my big fraction line, right? So two over one divided by one over four. Remember, I can just extend my line. My symbol stays the same. So I gotta make this one into fourths. So one times what gives me four? Four, right? So I'm gonna multiply one times four gives me four. Two times what? So I gotta multiply, if I multiply this by four, I gotta multiply the top by four. So two times four is eight. So eight fourths, eight divided by four is still two, right? I'm just finding my common denominator because now I can simply divide, right? I can divide four divided by four and that's gonna give me one. Then eight divided by one is gonna give me eight. Now I can just simply divide eight divided by one is eight. That's the math behind it, okay? All right, so I'm trying to get my bottom one to become a one because it's division over division, okay? So let me show you another one. Okay, well, it's not another one, it's the same one, but I'm gonna rock your world. Are you sitting down? I hope you are, because I'm just gonna rock your world, okay? So write this down. There is a shortcut, here is the shortcut, okay? So the shortcut is to multiply by the reciprocal of the fraction, reciprocal. So write it down, reciprocal are how many parts are needed to make the fraction a whole. In essence, that's what we're doing, right? Trying to make one of the fractions, trying to make it into a whole so I can easily divide. So the reciprocal of one fourth is four or four over one, right? It's the opposite, four over one, four divided by one is still four. The reciprocal of four fifths is five over four, okay? If I had one seventh, what would be the reciprocal? Seven over one, good, which is the same thing as seven, okay? If I had, um, one third, what's the reciprocal of one third? 
Yeah, just flip it around, three over one, which is the same thing as three, okay? So we gotta know the reciprocal. So we're gonna find the reciprocal. So you ready? Write this down. Keep, switch, flip, okay? So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna keep my first number. So my first number is a two, so I'm keeping it as a two. I'm gonna switch the operation. I had division, what's the opposite of division? The inverse, multiplication. So I'm gonna switch my division to multiplication and I'm gonna flip or find the reciprocal of one fourth, was the reciprocal of one fourth? Four, then I just multiply. Two times four is eight, okay? So we are finding a common denominator without writing it down. So we're skipping all the step here. We don't have to do all this step. We just do keep, switch, flip, but that's the logic behind it, okay? So the logic behind it is we were finding a common denominator, right? My common denominator was four. In essence, what am I doing? Two times four, right, is eight. One times one is one. So eight fourths divided by one fourth, eight over one, which is equal to eight. Did I rock your world? I hope I did, because that's gonna save you. Because you know how to multiply regular fractions and you know how to multiply regular numbers, right? So if you can do that, you can do division. You don't have to do all this steps. I just wanted to show you the logic behind it. All you have to do is keep, switch, flip. So say it with me. Keep, switch, flip. Keep, switch, flip. Keep, switch, flip. Keep, switch, flip. So for dividing fractions, keep, switch, flip. Keep, switch, flip. Say it with me. Keep, switch, flip. You keep the first number, you switch your operation, and you flip your second number, and then multiply like normal, right? Easy peasy. Did I rock your world? Hopefully I did. Okay. All right, so try one. Now that you know, keep switch flip. Four divided by one third. Go ahead and write it down and you use keep switch flip. Okay, I wrote it down both ways. I just wanted you to see it. So I did four over one divided by one third. And so I got to make a common denominator of three. So in order to do that, I got to multiply top and bottom by three. Four times three is 12. One times three is three. 12 divided by one is 12. Three divided by three is one. 12 divided by one is 12. So keep switch flip. We're finding common denominator without writing it down. We're just taking the 12, four. We're keeping the four. We're switching the operation and we're flipping the one third to make it a three. Four times three is 12. Wow, so easy, right? Okay, now that you're a pro at keep, switch, flip, because I know you are by now, right? Keep, switch, flip. Seven divided by one half. Go ahead and do that one, then come back to me. Okay, again, I went ahead and did it both ways. I just wanted to show you. Keep, you keep the seven. Switch the operation to multiplication. Flip the one half, which becomes two. Seven times two is 14. So we are doing it with that finding common denominator. If you wanted to find the common denominator, two, right? Got a common denominator of two. So I got to multiply this by two. Two times one is two. If I multiply this by two, I got to multiply the top by two. Seven times two is 14. 14 divided by two is the same thing as our seven, right? Simply divide, 14 divided by one is 14, two divided by two is one, 14 divided by one is 14. Way easier, right? Keep, switch, flip, way easier than having to find a common denominator and do all this. But I wanted you to know the logic behind it, okay? Because you know me, I want you to know why we can do things, okay? All right, so what did you learn today? So write down what you learned, Proof of learning by solving a problem. So go ahead and do a division problem with the whole number in the front and then divide it by a unit fraction. Okay, a unit fraction because that's our fifth grade standard. And then write a reflection or a question. If you want to up it a level, you can make your fraction not a unit fraction. Your choice. All right. Keep switch flip.